In this section, we are now looking at how we imply the function notation. We've got a series of three examples where we'll demonstrate how to use the notation and also demonstrate how to use our calculators. So when you're ready, proceed to the next slide. In this example, let's, we can see we're talking about the volume of a sphere, where we talk about the radius of the sphere is determined by the function of the rule volume as a function of r, that's the way we read that, as volume as a function of r is equal to 4 times pi times r cubed, all divided by 3. So that's the rule we're going to be using. And the question says, first of all, state the practical domain of the function v and also find v of 10. So this is a slightly different before we talked about implied domains. And, but this actually talks about practical domains. So when we're talking about a real thing, here we're talking about the volume of a sphere and the radius of the sphere, um, the implied domain and the practical domain can be two different things. If I look at the rule over here, the implied domains would be um, all x values, positive and negative, can go into this value where r is. There's no restriction on this rule. It's not going to make zero on the bottom. It's not under a square root. So there's no value of r I can't use. But the question here actually talks about the practical domain. The context of the question is we're talking about the volume of a sphere. Okay, so think about a, a balloon, right? The amount of air that's in the balloon determines how big the balloon is, what the, the sphere of what the radius of the sphere is, or the, the balloon, in terms of how much volume's in there, how much space it takes up. Now, we can't have a negative radius and we can't have a negative volume. So it's not practical to talk about values of r less than zero. It's also not practical to talk about when the radius is zero. If there's no radius, then I don't have any volume. So. This function here, its practical domain would be when r is an element of this set here. That It's got to be bigger than zero, so we write the interval notation, zero, comma, and practically it could go up to any size we want. We know we probably won't do that, but we could talk about the volume of the Earth. That's quite a big number because the radius of the Earth is quite large. So the practical domain here would be practical domain would be where r is an element of 0 to infinity. All right, second part of the question says find v of 10. So this means I need to substitute 10 into the rule. So this is going to become 4 times pi times 10 cubed. divided by 3. The exact value here we get here, 10 cubes 1,000, so this becomes 4 pi times 1,000 is 4,000 pi divided by 3, and that would be cubic units, so whatever, the, we don't know what the units are, so we just say cubic units. If it was centimetres, we'd say cubic centimetres. If it was metres, we'd say cubic metres, but we haven't got those, so we just say it's cubic units. All right. Um, on our calculator, we'll work out this is approximately 4,188 point eight. Um, next thing I'll show you how to do this on your calculator as well. Just a very quick little demo on the calculator. So that's that example question done because it said state the practical domain and find the value of the F10. That's what we call the exact value. That would be correct answer to one decimal place. You must read the question, what it asks for. So in this case here, the question here, asked for v of 10, it didn't specify anything, so the correct answer in this case would be this. We give the exact value unless we're asked for the decimal answer. Okay. 
All right, um, we are going to do the same question on our calculator. So I've opened up a new calculator page and I would start off by defining the function. So we go v of r and I'm going to use the control double dot equals thing for defining the function. I would go control divide here because it's a fraction. So 4 times pi, so I select pi from down here, times r to the power 3 all over 3 so that's defined the function looks correct to me v of r because r is our variable okay now there is a command on our calculator it's called the domain command if i go domain i'm just typing this it's the quickest way of v of r and comma r so we'll say what the variable is so want the domain of it with respect to r and it tells me the domain is a negative infinity to positive means I can use all possible values of r here um, in a minute I might demonstrate uh, an alternative function but we'll stick to this question first but we've decided that it's not practical to put negative numbers or zero into this rule in the context of this question where we're talking about the volume of something you can't have a negative volume or a volume of zero so in the second part of the question asks us to find v of 10 and you can see there I get the exact value because my calculator is set in exact mode I can change the settings up here probably worth looking here this my setting I've got a calculation mode in exact mode um, for methods that's where it should be um, if I went control enter I get the decimal point there um, if you're asked to round to a certain number of decimal points, you can actually, there's a command on the calculator called the round command, so I can go type round and open bracket, and you go up and select that number, the calculation you just did, and then say how many decimal place you want to round to, I want to round to one decimal place, so I'd go comma one and press enter. It gives me the exact value, so I need to go control enter, and it says 4188.8. Um... I'm going to type a the domain command again. If I now said I want the domain of the rule, the square root of x, and then get outside the square root and go comma x, it here it tells me the domain of the square root function is including 0 up to positive infinity. The calculator gives the answer in set notation. If we did the domain of the rule, something like... Um, 1 on x take 2. Remember we can't put 0 on the bottom of a fraction. We've got to say which variable we want for x. So if you can look at this rule you might see that the value 2 is a value we can't use in this rule. But any other x value would be fine. So you can see the calculator says x is not equal to 2. So there's a couple of new, couple of new little commands there for you to learn on the calculator about the round command and the domain command. But going back up to our thing here we define the function we can find the domain it may not be practical as this question asked but we can certainly use the function notation to do this it's a good place to stop this video in this example here we've got a function it's, it's called f its domain is r the range can be found in the real numbers that's what that's referring to there and the definition of f of x is fx equals ax plus b so it's actually a straight line because the power in x is a 1 we're told two things that f of 1 is equal to 7 that could have been written like this 1 comma 7 because f of 1 equals 7 is the same as saying the coordinate when x is 1, y is 7. So if f of 5 equals 19 is also referring to the coordinate 5, comma, 19. Right, here we're asked to find a and b and also to sketch the graph of f of x. Right, I'm going to leave a space over here so we can put the calculator on. It probably looks like it's already there when you're reading this. Okay, so... If you're asked to find um, 
letters in a question here, like we were asked to find A and B. The only thing we can do is use the mathematical information in the question, which is the two coordinates we've got here, 1, 7 and 5, 19, and substitute them into the rule. So if I first use f of 1 equals 7, means we end up with this equation. I put 1 where x is, so I get a times 1 plus b. So a times 1, I've put 1 here in the rule. a times 1 is 1, a plus b is equal to 7. So when you have two unknowns, you're generally going to have to find two equations and use simultaneous equations to solve. So f of 5 equals 19 is the other piece of information, so I'll substitute that in the rule. So if I put 5 where x is in the rule, I'm going to end up with 5 times a, so it's 5a plus b is equal to 19. And I would label that equation number 2. All right. Because both the b's have a 1 in front of them, I can use the elimination method here. I'm going to subtract this equation away from the top equation. So I'm going to say equation 1 minus equation 2. And when I do that, I get a take 5a is negative 4a is equal to 7 take 19 is negative 12. Divide both sides by negative 4 and I get a is equal to 3. Substituting this back into the first equation, so I'd be putting this back into where a is here. So I'm going to end up with 3 plus b is equal to 7. And therefore b is equal to 4. I've done the first part of the question, I found a and b. So f of x now could be written as 3a uh, 3x, 3a times x plus the b value, which is 4. So that's the function of f of x. I could test my values. If I put 1 into the rule, 3 times 1 plus 4 makes 7. That's right. Put 5 in the rule. 3 times 5 is 15 plus 4 makes 19. So that matches. We're also asked to sketch this graph. I'm just going to do it in this space down here. Um, the next slide will have a nice copy of all this. So let's draw a set of axes and label them x and y. I look at this rule here, I've got m is equal to 3. Probably best to write those 3 on 1 at the moment. And the y-intercept is 4. So this graph here, I'll just change the colour for the graph. It's got a y-intercept of 4, so that's the coordinate 0, 4. And it's got a gradient of 3, so it's going to go up 3 to the height of 7 and across 1. So it's going to be there. And therefore the straight line is looking like this. And if you really want to make your graph complete, you should find the y, the x intercept by making y equal 0. And that would be when x is equal to negative 4 on 3, comma, 0. And that's the sketch of that graph. Next, I'll show you how we can use the calculator to do exactly the same thing. From um, our last document here, I'm going to go to Doc and I'm going to insert a new problem. So I'm going to add a calculator page. So in this example here, we've got f of x is defined as a times x plus b, press enter. Now you, you must type the times between the a and the x, otherwise this will not work. All right, now we've defined the function using the function notation. There's a very smart way of finding the values of a and b, given the information we're given the question is to go to menu, 
go to Algebra and go down to Solve System of Equations. I always just select number 1 here. Um, we could select 2 for this case here, but 1 always works. 2 only works when they're linear equations. So I'm just going to use number 1 here. There's two equations. You press... Um, you use the arrow button... I'm oh, sorry, we'll change that to 2. If you, if you click down or press Enter or Tab, it goes down to these letters here. So it's going to be A, comma, B is the two unknowns in our question. Go OK. So it sets it up like this. But the beauty of the function notation, I can use the piece of information given to me in the question. So in the first box here, I type F of 1 is equal to 7. And in the second box, I write F of 5 is equal to 19. And press Enter. And tells me A is equal to 3 and B equals 4. You can try and be very clever here. You could either redefine f of x, or you could do this. I'm going up and selecting f of x. Then I use the domain command, basically, or the separator. You go control equals, and you'll see amongst these things there's the six, the four different inequalities they are not equal to, and this one here this is called the separator. This means you can add information about the rule. So here I've got f of x equals a of x plus b. Defined f of x is a x plus b, but I want to add these two things. So I go up and select a equals 3 and b equals 4. And now if I type f of x, it says it's the rule is 3x plus 4. Um, I can check my f of 1 was 7 and f of 5 is 19. Yep, it's a check. All right, I'm now going to insert a graphs page on this document. So you go doc, insert graphs, and I can now put f of x here. Ah, for some reason, even though I redefined it, it doesn't like this, so I'm just going to go cancel there. It, that's the, um, the last v's of a and b, so it's accepting those. Um, we can find our intercepts, just review that menu, you can go to Analyze Graph, and you can find the zero, which means it'll find the x-intercept for you. Remembering the calculator will not give you the exact value here, it always writes it as a decimal. So negative 1.33, you would expect that's negative 1 and 1 third, which in fact it is. Um, and you can't find the y-intercept using that Analyze menu. If you want the y-intercept, you need to go to Menu and Geometry go to points and lines and put a point on the line. So I'm going to put a point on this line. As you scroll closer to it, it jumps to the intersection of that and the y-axis. So it's telling me there. I'm going to put another point on this line. I'm just going to put it here. And as I slide close to the x-intercept, you'll see it jumps down to negative 1.33. It won't give me the exact value either. So I'm just going to click nearby and not I'm going to change this value in a minute. While this icon appears up here, I can't do anything else. To get off this, you need to press the Escape button. Now, this cool point that we've got here, I'm going to click inside here so the x coordinate lights up. I'm going to delete what's there. I'm going to type negative 4 divided by 3, or negative 1 and 1 third. And when I press Enter there, you'll see that it, it changes and jumps down and tells me Yes, negative 4 on 3, or negative 1 on 1 third, is exactly the point that we want there, the x-intercept. So, the calculator is that analyze menu won't never give you the exact value, it only ever write as a decimal. Sometimes it's exactly the same, but an example like this, when we're dividing by 3, it's only going to be approximate. You need to put a point on and actually calculate that value. Or you go back to here and you say, I want to solve when f of x is equal to 0 for x and they'll tell me the exact value there. So if you want the exact values you should use the calculate menu things like solve and the calculator page, the graphs page will produce things like this so it may not be the exact value. Alright, that would be a good spot to stop this example.
In this example here, we're asked to find the quadratic function f such that f of 4 and f of negative 2 both equal 0. This actually implies to us these are x-intercepts. And we're also told f of 0 equals 16. That's actually, in fact, the y-intercept. Be the coordinate 0, 16. And these two would be the coordinates 4, 0, and negative 2, 0. We're asked to find the rule of f of x, and if we're given the intercepts, so the format we should be using is the one where we have f of x is equal to a times the two intercepts here, so it's x take 4, x intercept 4, so x take 4, and it's the other x intercept is negative 2, so x take negative 2 be written as x plus 2. And the only unknown we now have is the a, so we can use the coordinate 0, 16, or f is 0 equals 16, so if I use f of 0 equals 16, then my equation will become 16 is equal to a times 0 take 4 make negative 4 times 0 plus 2 is 2. So this gives me 16 is equal to Negative 4 times 2 is negative 8, so it would be negative 8 times a is negative 8a. And if I divide both sides by negative 8, I get a is equal to negative 2. So therefore my rule is f of x equals negative 2 bracket x take 4 times x plus 2. And if we read the question, it says find the quadratic function such that, so I've solved the problem. We're not asked to do anything else with this, not asked to sketch or anything like that. Um, what I will do now is show you how we can use the calculator to do this also. And we're picking up on this document we started before, so I'll do the same thing as before. I'll go document, insert a new problem, add a calculator page. Here I'm going to define my rule as f of x is equal is defined as double dot equals a times, anytime you use letters of the next we must put times in, x take 4 as the first intercept times x plus 2. That's the other x intercept, press enter. And we can use the solve command here. Um, we can solve where f of 0 is equal to 16 is the third piece of information, and solve for a. And we get a equals negative 2. If I, I'm just going to call a function g of x, and I decided that I didn't possibly know that they are x-intercepts. I could have said this graph is of the form a times x squared plus bx plus c, the general form of a quadratic, and then, so it's defined, and if I go to menu and go to algebra and solve system of equations. Here I'm going to have three equations and my letters are A, B and C. Okay, and the three piece of information I had here was f of 4 is equal to 0, f of negative 2 was equal to 0, and f, oh, sorry these all should have been g's, g of 0 is equal to 16. So I'll just go back and change these to G's. And now press enter and I get 
this information, which is not quite what I expected. Oh, because I didn't type the thing in properly to start with. Have a look up here. What did I do? I forgot to put the times between the B and the X. So I select that, press enter, then go up and select this. And I get the values A equals negative 2, B equals 4, and C equals 16. So I'm now saying G of X is this rule, negative 2 X to the power 2 plus 4 X plus 16. If I now use the factor command, and I factor, well, I won't do it that way, I'll just go factor g of x, comma x, it tells me the same answers I worked out as before, negative 2 bracket x take 4 times x plus 2. So two different ways to doing the same thing there. We'll leave that at this stage.